Should you have a bunch of pens that take up a ton of room? Or will this pen that has 10 colors in one body do the trick? Yep, you've heard me right. 10 colors in one. Believe it or not, ballpoint pens are the greatest, cheapest, simplest drawing tools you can find. They're my go-to and I personally love using them to do some sketches. You've seen me use ballpoint pens before and you may recognize the 4-in-1 ballpoint pen, but when I came across this jumbo ballpoint pen at the dollar store one day, I couldn't resist to give it a try to do some sketches too. So in this video, why don't we have some fun together, fill one last sketchbook spread of the year, and get curious today and see what this pen is all about. Odds are you may have seen this pen before, or if you were like me, had it when you were like 10 years old. You also may have came across one online or seen any alternatives. I'm sure they come in all different color options, but this one in particular didn't have that much of brighter colors, but hey, we're gonna make it work. Sometimes it just takes a simple new art supply to get the creative gears flowing. And to tackle that blank page every single time, I'm gonna pretend I'm 10 year old Jess again. Try to go in with an intention of a beginner mindset and most importantly, just sprinkle a little bit of fun into it. Sometimes we tend to put a little bit of pressure on ourselves, especially when starting the blank page or a sketchbook spread. But the more and more I go into my creative practice, the more I realize how much our mind tries to convince ourselves for that fear of perfection. And the more I fight back and say, it's not that serious, just have fun with it. Get bold, experiment with new colors, new shapes, begin with great momentum, and as soon as your pen hits the paper, everything else will follow. And if you're intending to lead with passion and love for the subject you're drawing, as artists, it's then inevitable for things to just flow onto the page. I'm doing something quite different with my sketches today. With every sketch, I try to take a little bit of experimentation into the process, whether it's with distorting shapes, trying new color palettes, maybe drawing a new subject. And I find with every creative session, the first sketch is always like full of experimentation. I wanted to try all the colors in this pen. So the decision making was to try to get the right balance and where to position which colors since there were so many. I also really wanted to tap into the shapes that intuitively appeared on the paper. And then I just led the colors that drew me in most to lead the way. And I simply surrendered to the process. One thing I find so interesting when drawing, especially when using colored pencil or a ballpoint pen, with every texture and stroke you lay in, different shapes appear, different things begin to reveal themselves. So throughout the process, I was just looking at what shapes I saw, what things I wanted to accentuate more than others, and selecting and picking and choosing which of those felt best. I've been really loving incorporating little elements around my portraits and sketches. Even when doing sketches or completing studies, I still think it's important to make room and allow time and space for your imagination and voice to come through. After laying the first sketch in, I felt like I started to have a good momentum and I roughly laid in a bunch of little pink lines for the other portraits that I planned to put into the spread. But again, we never know what's gonna happen throughout the process, so we just gotta trust and just go with it. Naturally, I was just sticking with a warm sketch under drawing, kind of how I do with my gouache paintings where I do a warm underpainting. Then I would add some pink mid-tones and on top of that, I would start to add some shadows with the purples or blues. But truthfully, it's pretty much all trial and error, trying different placement of colors one round after another. But as I go along and finish this one and start our next sketch, a quick shout out and word from our sponsors, Squarespace. 
This is the all-in-one place where you can build your website. As you guys know, I've been working with Squarespace for quite some time, and even prior to working with them, I had built my website using Squarespace. Because of how user-friendly it was, it was super simple. I loved to learn its versatility and the options that you can have to adjust the template. You can simply drag and drop images, and voila, your website is ready to go. I also managed two shops, one regular shop and my secret Patreon shop now, and it's awesome that they have 24-7 customer service service just in case you need. Check them out and go to squarespace.com for your free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash jesscarp for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. I find it quite beautiful to see the way pink warm tones morph with purples and blues. Using a lot of colors can get overwhelming, but with these sketches and these color experiments, I try to follow the main color spectrum and let the values and contrasts of the colors try and help with the decision-making process. The biggest question and conversation to have with yourself is, which color do I place where and why? Well, I wouldn't say that there is a specific rule to this. There's an infinite way to use color and an infinite way to sketch, and your creative voice is unique to you. So this may sound a bit cheesy, but I would say to tap into the colors that you feel first. And if we want to get a little technical, I would say to keep the cheeks, the nose, and the ears warm. And a great starting point is to create your shadows to be on the cooler side, so using more blues. For this expressive sketch, I wanted to try a bit more intense expression. If you watch the channel, you know I love challenges, so if I can change up the shapes and the subject and just push myself a little more out of my comfort zone, I'm all for it. And just to share, my pen kept acting up throughout the process to show you and not leave it out that it would just get stuck sometimes. An initial observation was definitely that this pen didn't roll as smoothly as my other ones, but it's okay, it kind of created some texture, so we always gotta find the brighter side, right? What I was also doing is trying to encapsulate the shapes with a thicker outline and use more line variation. For example, on the chin, I had a darker blue. This brings more attention to the shadows there below. And then I used pink for the color just so I can have a little bit of shape there, but not bring so much attention to that part. So one great thing to think about while you're drawing is pay close attention to how thick or thin you make a line because sometimes depending on that, it can bring a bit more attention to one section versus the other. With this drawing on the bottom, I really wanted to try something different with the hair, add some shapes and flow to the hairstyle. I really enjoyed getting into the groove and playing with different directions of the cross hatching. And let me know if you guys do this, but I love to blast music while I'm drawing and that really helps me get into the flow and groove of things. I'd love to know what you guys do to get into the creative process and just get in the moment while you're drawing. Definitely feel free to drop a comment below because I'd love to know what helps you. And hey, who knows? Maybe your comment will help someone else too. With this portrait, I tried to be a bit more controlled and intentional with the lines. I tend to begin with very sketchy lines and loose lines when I start. I challenge myself to start with a very light line drawing with less strokes and then I thought I can always add some more cross hatches on top, which is the next layer I begin with for the mid-tones using the pink. I was really curious to see how I'd feel using other pens compared to this jumbo pen with the 10 colors. It was actually so funny and strange going back to using this thin red pen because the pen that has 10 colors was such a thicker pen with a bigger grip. But I was feeling a bit of a brighter red for these warmer tones here. And then I went back to using some of the colors in the jumbo pen. The red in the 10 colored pen was not as bright. And for some reason, I was just craving a bit more vibrancy for this one. And it was definitely an interesting experiment and color choice to try. When I'm creating, I'm always trying to zone out, but also trying to think about what am I learning from each piece or what every sketchbook spread sort of teaches me. And I guess you can say I also try to apply this in all areas of life. 
If we really pay attention, everything around us is a teacher. And as this year is almost coming to a finish, and I'm doing a bit more reflecting than usual, sketching with this ballpoint pen and using all these new different colors reminded me of how important it is to make time for play. I also learned that sometimes less is more. Ballpoint pens are definitely less forgiving, and once you put a stroke down, you can't really go back or erase. But hey, there is sort of a thrill to that. After finishing the last portrait on the top right, initially I wanted to fit two up there, but after assessing the composition, I thought one would fill up the space nicely. And even if it's just a sketchbook page, I always assess the bigger picture, the overall shapes and flow to the piece, and I couldn't help but finalize some of the movement with some colored pencils and a little bit of light blue. And after letting curiosity and massive action lead the way, I think I was finally up to a point where I can call it complete. 